do in various other areas. Then bug fixes, safety improvements, that's always important. Um, denial of service, so that's an issue that we've had quite a lot last year, and that's uh, definitely one thing that uh, continues to be at the top of our agenda. Basically, just keep on finding the part of the Ethereum protocol that's currently uh, being processed the slowest and keep working on improving it until the worst problem is something else, and then start working on that. Like client support, that's something that we've made great strides in over the last year or so. So, you know, we now have a functional Ethereum light client, and even I use it myself. Um, but, you know, there's still quite a lot of work to be done. There's still uh, work to be done just improving the quality, fully supporting uh, mobile applications and so forth. Then uh, Metropolis support. So Metropolis is our next major plant Ethereum hard fork. And there we have a bunch of interesting features around things like abstraction, things like improving integrating uh, some of these uh, ZK SNARK features and uh, various other things. So that's got to be supported in the clients. Then very important testing and security audits. So, you know, we did a large round of security audits before we launched. And that's something that's uh, a regular thing and we con continue to have audits that are ongoing. From a solidity point of view, um, the main thing that we're probably focusing now is safety. So we've focused a lot on functionality in the first half of last year, but since then we've pivoted uh, quite a bit to trying to just make sure the language is as hard to screw up with as possible. And part of that is uh, various language features, part of that is warnings, part of that is that uh, we have one developer, Yoichi, who is working on various formal verification features. Um, then uh, uh, Christian is adding an intermediate language, so something that Solidity compiles into before the EVM. And uh, this will help in enabling optimization, making the compilation process kind of more transparent, assisting in debugging. Then we have Remix. So last year we had Mix, which is our uh, IDE that we designed for developing Solidity contracts. But now Remix, so we're basically moving the IDE over into JavaScript. Um, so, Ethereum d doesn't just exist in isolation, it exists as part of this kind of integrated Web3 vision. And beside Ethereum, we have these two sister projects, Whisper and Swarm. And so Swarm is a, a distributed content store. So just stores data, key value map. You upload data, data goes up, you, and if you want to uh, download a piece of data, you would get the hash, use the hash, and uh, fetch the actual piece of data from the network. And the kinds of use cases this was intended for, I mean, first of all, there's a lot of applications that only need to store the hashes of data on chain instead of storing the whole data. So this would be situations where the entire data is just too large, where you'd want to not store the whole thing for privacy purposes. And generally in those cases, what you want to do is you'd want to store the actual data on Swarm. Now, if you have privacy needs, then obviously when you store the data, you'd also want to encrypt it. Um, but you know, that's one thing that you can use Swarm for. Um, another thing is storing the uh, user interfaces of dApps. Um, so this would be you know, HTML and JavaScript files. So for example, over here we have a, a for or a bulletin board that's designed right now just on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, so you know, every message is a transaction. But you know, eventually something like this could be done kind of more fully over Swarm and Whisper. And here it's using Swarm as a way of hosting the interface, right? So there's no actual single server that this decentralized application relies on. Whisper peer-to-peer -peer messaging. So it has probably two major categories of use cases. One of them is uh, privacy-preserving communication. And the other is uh, in other kinds of blockchain protocols where you also have to use a combination of on-chain and off-chain techniques, right? So if you look at something like state channels, for example, you know, passing around off-chain data is something that has to happen. So not every kind of message goes on the blockchain and every message that, go that doesn't go on the blockchain, you know, how do people actually uh, kind of transmit them to each other? So Whisper is the protocol for that. Um, in some cases, you might have uh, protocols for uh, decentralized exchanges where orders get passed around. So lots of use cases there. So research, the major goals here are designing future versions of the Ethereum protocol. Right? So the next major release that we have is Metropolis, and we'll talk about a couple of the features of that very soon. But aside from that, there's proof of stake, Casper, 
Um, and Casper includes some kind of bottom level research into distributed consensus theory, some research into cryptoeconomics, which I gave a couple of presentations about recently. Um, and it includes like, designing the actual algorithm, figuring out the roadmap, for making sure that the algorithm works correctly, building simulations, building test networks, and you know, eventually avoids getting to the point of releasing. Scalability and sharding is a bit longer term, so there are some things that we can do in parallel. So we can look into erasure coding, we can look into the same sort of basic kind of cryptoeconomic research. Um, asynchronous programming models, so that's the sort of thing that would be useful for cross-shard communication. But part of the roadmap really does depend on proof of stake, basically, because the way that the sharded consensus will look ultimately depends very heavily on what the kind of non-sharded base layer consensus looks like. So this is uh, what I kind of aspirationally, I guess, view as our research uh, and uh, roadmap, right? So in general, First step is always to determine the goals. So in our case, the goals are scalability, um, reducing the cost of uh, the consensus algorithm, making the consensus algorithm have stronger properties, things like economic finality, things like general kind of economic incentive compatibility, fault tolerance. Then from there, come up with a solution path, so come up with some proposal for an algorithm to solve the problems. Then from there, analyze it further. We do a bit of internal peer review. And sometimes if we have a big idea, the research team might even organize kind of internal mini workshops like we did back in Singapore in November. Um, and there are two possibilities that could come out of this, right? One of them is that we discover the solution path is flawed, in which case we come up with a different one. Another possibility is that we discover the solution path is flawed, but part of that is discovering a new goal, right? So part of that is realizing wait, these properties aren't enough, we also want to have these other properties. And if that's the case, then you know, go back to the determined goal step. So then afterwards, you know, analyze further internal peer review, if that passes, then the next step is to prove the concept using a kind of minimal simulation. So the idea here is not to make a kind of full-on simulation with a full-on kind of real-life network or even a full-on you know, version of the Ethereum protocol, but just a quick simulation in Python that shows nodes that kind of talk to each other over a simulated network, and that shows that they can all come to consensus, that shows that it has the desired properties. And this might have a couple outcomes. First of all, the process of proving might uh, make us realize that there is a flaw, or we might discover that the development complexity or the implementation complexity is too high, and that requires us to simplify. Um, or alternatively, you know, hope, hopefully the concept proving passes and everything still looks fine. At the same time, we also uh, are starting to do some formal verification. So for example, uh, last week, uh, Yui, and actually a couple of days ago, he released a blog post, Yuichi uh, did some formal proving on a fairly keystone piece of Casper. So basically proving that it has some of the safety and liveness properties that we expect. Then if that passes, then we can create an kind of integrated single node simulation. So include everything, you know, just like build a complete implementation in Python and have it talk to itself over a simulated network. Then after that, go from a simulated network to a real network across multiple nodes. Then you know, implement and test across all clients. And actually all the way through this process, you know, the kind of analysis and the internal peer review, and then you know, has some external peer review as well, hopefully continues. If we discover some flaw, then you know, yes, there's some work that will have to be thrown, it, thrown out and we have to go to back to the drawing board a bit. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Create a test network, then implement and test across all the clients, and then release. Right? And all the way through this path, there are, of course, ongoing security audits. So Metropolis, so here's just a sample of some of the things that we want to do during Metropolis. So one um, major um, Ethereum improvement proposal that we're introducing has to do with this thing that's called abstraction. And the idea with abstraction is that it allows sending unsigned transactions from a special kind of entry point address. And the purpose of this is that ba to basically move signature verification from being a part of the protocol to being a part of uh, EVM contract code, right? So the benefit here is that instead of uh, kind of being stuck in uh, one particular way of verifying transactions, people can 
if they want, make their own kind of uh, verification functions for their, for their own accounts.